This is one of multiple videos discussing SDN, network programmability, network automation, overlays and related technologies. Okay, so what happens if we change the mode? We can use this command to change the mode of the switch. So what I'll do is no shut the connection so that we're back to using OpenFlow. And what I'll do is paste that command in. Notice the pings are starting to fail. But after a while now, once the flow entries are written to the switch, the pings start succeeding. So that looks good again. The command get fail mode bridge will show us which mode is being used. So for BR0, the fail mode now used is secure. So let's see what happens now when we lose connection to the controller. What happens with the flows? Notice the flows are still shown. Switch is not able to connect to the controller. Flows still remain in the OpenFlow table. So in other words, because this is using fail secure, the flow entries are not removed. They will remain in this table. And because of the way the flow entries are written, pings continue to work. In this example, the OpenFlow switch is configured that traffic coming in on port one is sent out of all other ports on the switch. Traffic coming in on port two is sent out of all other ports on the switch. Same for all other ports. It's flooding the packets out of all ports. So hence the pings succeed. OVS VS CTL show shows us that we no longer have a connection to the controller. We're in fail secure mode. I'll no shut the interface and let's see what happens. Still in fail secure mode because we have to wait for spanning tree to converge. Now that spanning tree has converged, OVS VS CTL show shows us that we are now connected to the controller. So in fail secure mode, what happened was the flow table was kept per the documentation. We can also set it to standalone mode to make it act in the same way that we saw previously. So here on the switch, we could set it to standalone mode. Notice the mode is now set to standalone mode. And if we shut the connection to the controller, still showing us connected at this point. Notice now the mode has changed to standalone mode. And if we dump the flows, notice no open flow flows are shown on the switch. I'll no shut it. And this behavior will be the same as before. We could set it back to secure, but I'll wait for the connection to resume back to the controller. Still blocking, now it's learning. Switch is still learning. Spanning tree is now forwarding. So let's set it to, to secure. Flows are shown and I'll shut that port down again. And what we should see now is the flow entries just remain. OVS VS CTL shows us that the switch still believes that it's connected to the controller. Wait a little bit. Notice we back to secure mode. Dump of the flows, notice the flows still remain in the open flow table. So for a connection interruption, switches act in one of two modes, fail secure or fail standalone. Some switches use fail secure as their default. 
Other switches use fail standalone as their default. That is implementation specific. In general, fail standalone means that OpenFlow is no longer used. Switch reverts to traditional writing and switching. That requires a hybrid switch. In other words, a switch that supports both OpenFlow and traditional routing and switching. Fail secure means that the switch continues to use OpenFlow, doesn't remove the flow entries, except the entry sending traffic to the controller and other entries will time out based on the idle timeout and hard timeout. Genius 3 is once again fantastic at testing this kind of thing. I've got an OpenFlow controller connected to a Cisco switch, connected to an OpenV switch switch, and I'm testing OpenFlow within GNS3. The reason I've got this router is simply to allow this Ubuntu Open Daylight controller to get internet access. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.